So here's some story about the evolution of search engines. So I remember the Yahoo directory that was done by people. It was very successful and useful when it came along. And it was essentially a hierarchically organized, uh, uh, rich set of information which uh, effectively um, gave a tree-based uh, answer to, to uh, informa into information categorization and search. So you searched for things which were entries on this tree and the leaves of this tree. Then we had the first generation of search engines. Uh, which only use this effectively the text data on the page. There are various uh, information retrieval techniques, uh, uh, which we will discuss. TF um, term frequency uh, slash inverse document frequency vector space models, where we think of everything documents and queries sitting in a space. Uh, these were capable of scaling much better than the, the original Yahoo method. Lycos, Excite, were, Inc. and Me were early versions there. And uh, they did not do much work on ranking. And they were relatively easy to game the system and get back, as, get back to the user spam. Or pages where the uh, owner of the page doctored the page to make, it, make search engines respond to that page. So then along came Google and uh, of course that was they were didn't they were not this is the, they were a particularly precise formulation of link analysis. I don't think they were certainly not the first to do link analysis. And we have who we have link analysis, which is what pages are given page refers to, and then we were, what you're interested in was turning pages which are linked to by many other pages. We have the anchor test. Which is pretty interesting. When you do a hyperlink, you have both the link and you also have the text, which is hyperlinked. So that text, which is called the anchor text, is pretty useful because it tells you what the person referencing that page actually thought about the page. So that's a sort of a, a very interesting uh, additional piece of information you can use in search engines because it's uh, very dynamic. It is highly motivated to to be accurate. And probably has high value added. It's not so much of it, but it's high value added. Click through data, that's what, that's this thing about buying shoes. Um, we want to know well, when you get to a page, what people what people click on and what they do when they click on it. Um, so the ranking today is much improved. And, but now we're also improving things like uh, getting diversity so we don't have our results being too homogeneous. And there's a big, you know, there's as they said, cat and mouse game where um, the spammers and the search engine writers uh, uh, leapfrog each other and uh, trying to remove spam and trying to, trying to second guess the anti-spam device. So, the next set of search engines were really trying to focus on what the user really in, implied, not the words in the query. And uh, that can you can get a lot of value added such as you know where the user is. Uh, like um, when you go to a foreign country, uh, the search engine often changes the uh, search engine to correspond to that country. That's actually not always what the person wants, and usually they ask you if you want to change your search engine to one optimized for that country. Well, you have the previous queries, and you can also, of course, use regular expressions to uh, try to do a more, more precise matching. Then we have, of course, not just text, we have maps and videos and images and news stories and things like that. And as you type your query, there's, there's uh, automatic spell collection, correction. Actually, automatic uh, real-time results so that you can see whether what you're getting is what you really wanted, which helps you write a better query. And um, these are all ways of trying to help the user, as they write the query, uh, get good answers. So now we're having an even greater 
focus on topics, namely the technology which we'll mention briefly, like latent Dirichlet allocation, which and those technologies are things like uh, similar to those used in um, Google News, which try to find the focus on the hidden meaning of, um, of, a, of a document. And what a document was is something, I think web page is a document and uh, um, so another thing is the growing use of social network sites gives you a lot of context which uh, can help you the search engine find what the user is interested in. And of course we know that makes an enormous difference when you search for items at Amazon, because the Amazon will use who you think to and who has similar rankings to you to find out what you want. So. Here we have a new emphasis on the diversity of results. You don't want everything coming from the same website. And so you you and you so you want to make certain that you're giving plenty of choices. Um, this picture here is um, one of what a web search engine looks like. Here we have the user issuing queries. Getting results, the results are ranked, and that's what the user gets back. Uh, the query, um, as well as that, we have crawlers. The crawlers are going out to the web. Um, the user's feeding back to see what all the good things to crawl. We have all the data get from the crawlers gets stored in a repository. You make nifty, sophisticated image indexes. Um, we have um, all sorts of um, value added things here, indices added. And um, you then also look at collections of pages and analyze them. So this is the type of architecture of a web search system. <clears throat> 